everybody, I'm Dave from Growing the Home Garden. I'm here today, I thought I'd give you a little tour of our garden here in March and just kind of walk you around everything. I know with everything going on, we need a little bit of a distraction, see what else is going on in the world, you know, more positive things. And spring is coming out here in Tennessee right now and things are looking pretty good. I've got a ton of work to do, but uh, let me show you around. So over here is where I've got some plants growing for some propagation and uh, a lot of good things happening over here right now let me show you some of them see right here we've got some japanese dappled willow cuttings that are doing good i'm pretty sure they're all rooted over there are some camellia cuttings which i don't think have rooted yet and there are some arborvitae ones that i'm still waiting on and more arborvitaes also took some grapevine cuttings and I'm trying some Japanese maples from cuttings as well, but I've never actually gotten one of those to succeed from a cutting, so we'll see how that goes. Over here, that's a Shasta viburnum, and another Shasta viburnum. I've got about three of these smaller ones right now. And this is a type of honeysuckle. It's a coral red honeysuckle, which uh, it's not invasive like the Japanese honeysuckles are, but it's also not fragrant like they are. It is beautiful. It's got these really nice red and orangish color blooms that the hummingbirds still love, but it doesn't spread as terribly as the other ones do. Oh, and let me show you this here. This is pretty cool. This is a hops plant. I believe it's Cascade Hops. I forget exactly. But I've got several of those in these pots here, and they are just starting to emerge. I transplanted them last year from uh, self-layered cuttings near our other hop vine plants. Now over here, I've got some boxwoods that, that I did from cuttings last year, and then a bunch of lavender that I did from cuttings. They all need kind of a pruning come back on them but I'll have a video on that a little bit later so you can see my patio is quite a mess I have not gotten out here to weed it or do anything to it although I have started the process and our yard is a mess if you look at this grass here I got gas for the mowers and intended to mow it this past Sunday afternoon and it rained and it's been raining ever since so it's really hard to rain or mow after it's been raining so much now this is the largest Shasta viburnum I've got right now because I cut the other one back. But you can see its foliage is coming out and it's starting to get the blooms. It's budding. And it's just a gorgeous plant to have in the garden. Next to it, over here, I've got a... Uh, this is a Berkwood viburnum. And it has a really nice fragrant smell every spring. I believe it's, this one is Mohawk. Uh, however, I've had some issues with it. If you, if I can pull you down in here into the trunk area, I've had woodpeckers all over it, which makes me wonder if I've got a borer problem of some kind in here. So I got to do some more investigation. I'm hoping that it makes it long enough that that I can do some corrective pruning this year and see if I can get in there and rejuvenate the plant. But you can see the woodpecker damage right up there on those branches. I like the birds, but sometimes they can be annoying. Now over here, see all this dead nettle on the ground, just kind of growing wild. But this is Lunaria, uh, sometimes called the money plant, and it grows these little seed pod things that look kind of like little silver dollars. They're kind of neat to grow. And I did a video on this particular plant not too long ago. I tell you what, never plant a sweet autumn clematis because they just continue to spread and grow everywhere they go. Uh, they are one of the most annoying plants in my garden. I keep pulling them year after year after year. But do plant these. That's a heuchera. I believe that one's Southern Comfort uh, is the variety name, but I'm not 100% on that now. Coming over here, we've got lots of weeds that need to be weeded. And there's some hellebores, and the hellebores have done really well this year. Look over here, here's some more. What I'm looking forward to is being able to gather up some of the seed and spreading the seed out good. Walking over through here, this is usually where I have hostas, and I'll link to a hosta video that I did so you can see what it looks like when it's actually growing. But the hostas are just now starting to come out. In fact, here, I'll show you what they look like. 
And if you ever want to divide a hosta, I would wait till they're just a little bit larger than this, dig them up and divide them while they're still without any major foliage. Uh, that's when you'll have the best chance of success, but you know, hostas are really fairly forgiving, so you can, you can transplant them throughout the year as long as you're willing to water and take care of them. But they're growing pretty well. I've got quite a few hostas. Actually, this one right here, that's kind of about the ideal stage to transplant and uh, do some division. Looks like I could probably get quite a few out of that one if I wanted to. And there's another one over there. I'm forgetting which varieties these are because I don't label things. I kind of rely on my memory, which is not always the greatest of things. Over here, there's another heuchera. This one looks like a palace purple. That's pretty common. They're, they will grow true from seed, or at least they'll appear true from seed. We got some pachysandra over there. I planted that just as a ground cover in this area. And a little further over, You'll see some Solomon seal coming over on the right. That's a variegated variety of it. And I've got some irises. The irises I planted a long, long time ago when there wasn't any shade here. And uh, those all need to be transplanted and put in a better, a better location that's got more sunlight. This is a hydrangea. There you go. And it's starting to put out some foliage. See if we can focus on that better. Maybe up here. There we go. And you see my pathway is really muddy right now. Uh, it used to be all grass, but it has just completely grown shady over here with the different trees I've got, like these redbud trees. That's a forest pansy redbud that should be blooming here before too long. And as the shade comes, the grass goes because it just doesn't grow here. Instead, we've got moss. So I'm hoping to get some more stones, stepping stones, and things like that out here this year. This bed... So got more heuchras, not heuchras, hellebores, and Solomon seal over here. You can get a better look at the Solomon seal. Come around. See, so this is variegated Solomon seal, and what's really neat about it is it grows these stalks straight up in the air, and then the flowers and blooms kind of appear on the underside of it. It's real pretty, but it does spread by rhizomes. And you can see there's quite a few little spots of it all around in this garden bed. But that's okay. It fills it in. They like shade and will very easily take over that shady area. Got a few more hostas coming up in here. Hydrangea. This is a Japanese maple. You can see we're starting to get some leaf growth on the Japanese maples now. Now this is a Jane Magnolia, and I took it as a layered cutting off of my in-laws plant. And they are just really gorgeous plants to have in the garden. They're deciduous. You can see it's got a pretty good stalk and everything by now. But this was done a few years ago, and it's just done great. Really grows well here in Tennessee. Now if I follow around the corner, get a better look at it. Back behind it, I've got two Shasta viburnums, also done from cuttings, and uh, they're going to be loaded with white blooms here before too long. I wish I could coordinate the purple and the white. I think that'd look great, but, you know, sometimes things don't work that way. Now up here, we've got a gorgeous plant. At least in the springtime this is a uh, purple leaf plum it's all covered with flowers all along the stems it's a member of the prunus family i believe it's prunus cerecifera i think if i pronounce that right but it is just a gorgeous tree right now and its foliage is all purple i'm gonna stand back here so you can see it better underneath it i've got some forsythia those need to be moved, but I'll wait till they're done blooming, and then I'll just take a ton of cuttings off of those. If you ever want to start a garden business, forsythia sell really well, and they're easy to propagate. 
Coming back around over here to our mailbox area. And you see the creeping flock starting to, to produce right there. And this is really easy to propagate too, because if you go underneath it and just check all these little roots, you've got lots and lots and lots of little things on here. Little nubs where the roots are starting out, okay? So you can take all kinds of little stem cuttings of those as they really like to self-layer. Now the forest pansy red buds were not blooming, but these over here are loaded in blooms. These are two that I purchased a while ago, along with the Leland Cypress behind to help screen off this side of the yard. And it's gotten really big. Red buds are a legume, and they create these little seed pots that are pretty cool. And a while back, I decided to start growing some fruit trees, and I put them kind of along our driveway here. I've never actually gotten any good fruit out of them because I get vine, or not vine borers, that's for squash. But I get borers on the fruit, and they tend to ruin everything for us. But this one is a purchased peach tree variety that I don't recall the name of. And this one is actually one that I grew from a seed. And it's gorgeous too. But maybe this year will be the year. And then I've got two plum trees over here. And there's one. And there's two. I was worried at one point that we wouldn't get anything out of them just because of the way the weather was warming up so much and the frost happening. But it seems like we're doing okay this year now. This is a crepe myrtle tree that I planted. And this is kind of a failure for me. But I planted another exact copy of it over here. In this area, I intended to be just a pathway up our, our hillside. And I've not done much with it aside from just mowing it. So it really could be done a lot better. But, you know, you do things as much as time allows to the best you can. Sometimes you have to drop certain projects. So let's walk over here toward the vegetable garden area. So you see my vegetable garden's kind of a mess right now. You gotta get out here and do a little bit more. But we've got some areas cleaned up in the garden. Um, we planted some seeds over here for lettuce and different things like that. We've got some mustard greens growing right now. And then over here, we've just got some cilantro happening. Uh, there's some peas popping up right there. Got some onions. Yeah, and I, I know, it's a bit of a mess. I've got to go out and get some amendments, some compost, and fill those up quite a bit. Over here in this bed, I've got a few things going on. More plant propagation stuff. These are elderberries that I propagated from a plant last summer. And they're doing great, just doing really good here. And then I've got some forsythia that propagated a while ago and I potted up. Somebody was wanting some, so I went ahead and pulled it out. And then this is the Onondaga viburnum, which I love the blooms on it. And this little one is starting to bloom already, but it's got some great foliage too. It's kind of a maple leaf foliage that's got kind of that burgundy, burgundy edging on it. And the flowers have some of that same coloration, too. So they're pretty cool. And then there's more of those forsythias. The other day, I took a flat of some stuff, and I covered it here to keep things from eating it. Got some pak choy. Got some kale in there. So we got a few things started. This is the bed I planted the potatoes in. They shouldn't be popping up because I just did that a few days ago. But they'll be growing up here before too long, probably another week we'll start to see something coming up. And then after that we'll uh, really start to see some good growth as long as the weather stays good. I brought you into the greenhouse a while back and showed you some of the salvia cuttings, which they're still doing fine. 
But what's really neat is I've actually got some peach trees that have started growing from cuttings. See these peach? I don't want to pull it out to show you the roots yet because it's still small, but I did pull it out the other day and they're definitely forming roots and they're doing well. And basically these vinegar containers, see there I even wrote on it there. That's from the seed grown variety I just showed you. But basically if you cut the bottom part off of one of these vinegar containers, you can use that as the pot and then fit this directly over it, tape it to it, and it will keep the humidity in pretty well. There's some rosemary. They have rooted. I need to kind of pinch them back and encourage some new growth, but you got some new growth on it right there. So they're gonna be fine. Rosemary is very easy to grow. A lot of people will grow it in water, but there's really no point to even messing with the water. Just get some sticks of the rosemary, strip off the lower half of them, pop it in soil and keep it moist and you're gonna be fine. Rosemary is really easy to grow. And then over here, there's some plums. They're starting to root too. Got some other plants back there, some hemlock that didn't do well. I was just experimenting and never done a hemlock before, so thought it'd be worth a try. Also got some blueberries over here, right there. So we'll see how those do. They're really leafing out good, but I don't think they have roots yet. Sometimes that happens. If you you want to be very careful that you don't start pulling them too early. But what you can do is if you have a flat like one of these, and you look underneath it, like see there is a root coming out. So I know one of the plants in there has a root, which might actually be just this weed. I don't know. Kind of looks like it. I'll just toss that out but anyway you just check the underside of your pots see if roots are starting to come out then you can if you've got roots you can go ahead and transplant it um, it's just a better indicator you're better off just leaving a cutting in longer and making sure it roots than to disturb it just keep that in mind brought you over here to see this plant which is a really awesome one to have and it's a red buckeye. You can see right there the flowers are starting to produce buds. And of course, you know, that's the traditional leaf shape of the buckeyes. Uh, but they produce these flower stalks that just grow really beautiful red flowers on them that the hummingbirds love. So definitely one to plant if you want to attract some hummingbirds. Uh, it grows well in a mostly shady area to part shade. So, now I would keep it directly out of the sunlight. And this is kind of neat down here. Makes me curious if I can take a cutting off of that piece, if there's any roots off it. But it's sending up a little shoot here on the bottom. So that's a cool discovery. Typically, for planting these, you sow the seeds fresh in the fall. And I'll post a link to that video here. Um, because I actually did get one that, that grew, but the other four seeds that I planted all got eaten by squirrels. That's, that's life for you. Of course, we've got all kinds of these little great hyacinths popping up everywhere. Just a little bit of color. And then over here, there's another Forsythia. Looking back up toward the house. Those are a couple of viburnums there. And I'm a little concerned about them this year. I'm not sure they're going to make it, but actually, I think they will. These are arrowwood viburnums, and I was wanting to get some more cuttings off of them this year. Transfer over to our new land. I say new land, but we've had it for about two years now. Haven't done anything over there yet, other than mow it. <laughs> so, but it looks like this is going to come back. And then crepe myrtles. Crepe myrtles are beautiful trees when you let them become trees. I love the bark. Check out this one here. I mean, just look at how that, that forms. The bark is actually, it exfoliates and it peels off and it reveals this smooth texture everywhere. It's just a really nice looking tree when you let it grow like that. A lot of people cut them down to the nubs, do what's called crepe murder, but I mean, there's a reason why it's called crepe murder. Now I didn't do some great pruning work on this because you can see where they've clubbed up against each other and have joined. A couple of these should have been trimmed out a little bit better along the way. 
and maintained, but it's still a gorgeous tree as it is. They will bloom in the summertime. And these are kind of a watermelon pink sort of color. I don't know the variety because they were taken from seedlings and or cuttings from a plant on my parents' property. One more plant I want to talk about here is a red buckeye. I showed you the picture of the other one, but this is the one I did from seed. See how well it's growing, but you know, neighbor pots don't have anything. So I at least got one out of five. Next time I will have to protect them better um, and hopefully keep them out of the squirrel's reach. That is a challenge. So I hope you enjoyed this little walk around the garden, uh, the yard. I know things are a bit of a mess right now. I haven't had time to get out and do any kind of cleaning up yet. Actually I have, but not enough. So we're continuing with that process here this spring, trying to get the vegetable garden growing, trying to get everything else going. And you know, it's a good time to be out in the garden when all the stuff in the world is so crazy and chaotic and you just need an escape so you know highly encourage you to get outdoors get in the garden there's nothing stopping you from that it's probably one of the best places you can be these days so anyway i'm dave from growing the home garden thanks for watching please like and subscribe the video and look forward to talking to you more leave some comments if you have any questions thanks have a good one